Welcome to Shelf Life. I'm enjoying my Organo Gold hot chocolate and I'm enjoying it with Sonia King who is going to be my guest today right here at Bucophilia. I'm also enjoying her coffee. Beautiful. Coffee, yes. We're talking about jacket or full suit. Paternity testing from a Jamaican perspective. Sonia, I did not realize just how much paternity testing there was going on in Jamaica until I read this book. You and most people in Jamaica, <laughs> I would say, Judith. <laughs> but before we get to the book, let's talk a little bit about you. Mm -hmm. What's your background? Well, I mean, how did you get into this whole thing of writing this book? I, well, the writing of the book came about because um, I used to do tutorials with the medical students at UWE. Okay. On a Friday morning, and the tutorial was about blood banking matters, blood-related issues. And I started giving them a little bit of the paternity testing um, cases that I did as case studies. Turned out that at the end of each um, session, I would be asked for more because they're interesting cases. They, they sure are. <laughs> and I jokingly said on one occasion, buy the book when it comes out, Joke, jokingly. When I retired, I got people calling to say, how's the book coming along? And I said, book? You know, which book? And then I thought, well, maybe I ought to get onto this book. And it was five years later that I put pen, literally pen to paper, and started writing. But I had everything already in um, a folder from my last seminar on, on the topic. So it was very easy to select the more interesting cases. Right. And how long have you been in this paternity testing Well, over 30-odd years wow. at UWE. 30-odd years doing... That was my substantive post. Okay. So, yes. And I know there's somewhere in the book you talk about a gene that you discovered totally by accident. Oh, well, the, well, the system, it's a very complex system that was used. It was not DNA at the time. It was HLA. Okay. And up to the time that was that came into being about in the sixties when there was all the buzz while I was a student about this new system that was discovered in ladies that had, had multiple pregnancies and okay. they found an antibody in these ladies. This was in Europe, in England. And when I came home and eventually got into the thing, it's still a new still a new um, genetic system and so new genes were popping up. And there, sometimes you find something that is not there already, which is what happened in one particular case. Yes, there's one case that in I here did, where yes, you found yeah, something yeah. that you hadn't yes, seen before. Yes. So I couldn't work out the frequency because we hadn't seen it before, which meant that it was even more, it was a much rarer occurrence. We made, matching for the man made it even more proof that he was the father because this thing had never shown up before. So it was a rare, very rare gene. So that was one case that even if it was a jacket, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't know. <laughs> no, but, but this, this was really a good match. That was a good match. That was one of the cases. But there are some, as I say, really interesting cases. I chose the most interesting of the uh -huh. cases that I did, Judith. And, and you sure did, boy. Yeah. You sure did. They're, they're actually not just interesting, but very hilarious. So I'm told. Some of these are really hilarious. And even in some of them, I realized you were even threatened. There were cases where you got threats on that your life. That became a part of the job. Many threats. Some, as I say, you didn't take seriously because people tried to frighten you into changing your report, which would never happen. But there were some very serious threats. And one again that's in the book, when I came face to face with a real, for the first and last time, Don. Wow. Who wanted, you know, I mean, that was a real, that was a real serious threat. And you realize that that one is serious. Yeah, not, if the Don, if the Don man threatened you, that is yes. a serious threat. And he eventually got killed by somebody who he muscled upon, who some, you know, badder man wrong, than wrong him. Wrong person. Yeah, yeah, and well, he muscled upon me and I could only report it. Bullbuck and doppie yes, conquer type of thing. Yes, yeah. I, I would never have guessed or even imagined that something like paternity testing could bring about that kind of a response from people. Yeah, because and again, it's because we don't even it's know. It's a very sensitive thing. And in order to test, you need both parents and the child. Yes, you do. And they all have to be there at the same time. That was one of your of rules, test. right? Yes, because it's not like you're going to get a check, test to see whether or not you have diabetes. If you have sugar, nobody's going to want to change a report to say you don't have sugar. Right. But if, if it's about um, paternity, then they're all the in underlying little, little variables where mm -hmm. people want to s say, well, it's not my child. You, mm -hmm. you, you know, or or it's his sides. child yes. so that I can get the support. Yes, that's right. So there's always that little intrigue involved. And the looks doesn't matter. It says so in the book. There's a, a, a chapter that says um, the looks, you know, looks don't count. And I said that so often to, to the patients, you know. They would come in and say, and I read from a chapter that mm -hmm. says that looks don't count. 
they come and say, but look at look at the picnic, you know, she says a man head on the picnic shoulder. What do we want to test for? You know, that is in in fact as I say. They, some they of would these say that about me yes. because I'm the spitting image of my dad. Yes. <laughs> so don't mean to say that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, James. But um <laughs> you know. It happens. Anything can it happens. happen. It happens, it happens, yes. <laughs> when you launched this book two years ago you were on independent voices i was you were you, the first people that had me on i'm so grateful for that thank you thank you much. we enjoyed having you, you on our audience had a blast with this book Wonderful. and i think you probably did really well that okay. day with the book but yes we did we did very well and as a throw off from that we got a lot of calls afterwards mm -hmm. and a lot of interest was generated because of your your launch of because of independent voices yes. we you. have some footage of Sonia at Independent Voices, which we're gonna roll so that you can get your own little taste of what her book is all about and how it reads. And in a subsequent telephone conversation, this friend said, Let me not see you jacket in a lipstick the other day, man. Mm -hmm. This casual comment from his friend convinced the husband to check things out. Mm -hmm. Never mind the wife's doubts over the years. This re the reasoning of his wife over the years actually made the husband more resolved to accept the child as proof that he could fire a live shot or do a thing. <laughs> they came for the appointment and the child turned out to be in his 20s. They were told to return for the report in a week's time and I would explain the findings. When I showed them on my worksheet just how much the husband did not match with the child, he was devastated and an uneasy calm came over the house, the, the lad. I looked up and the man said, Miss King, that's not a jacket, that's a full suit. Hence the title of my book. You're watching Shelf Life and my guest today is Sonia King. Her book is Jacket or Full Suit. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Shelf Life is brought to you by Jam Copy. Protect, respect, access. Jamaica Business Journal. Relevant, insightful, informative. Talawa Magazine for the latest news in culture and the arts. And Bookophilia. Live inspired. Welcome back to Shelf Life. I'm at Bookophilia with Sonia King, author of Jacket or Full Suit. And we are just getting into the book, talking a little bit about how it came into being. So Sonia, we were talking earlier on about all the background of this book. I want to talk a little bit about the themes in the book because we have a habit in Jamaica and in the Caribbean in general anyway of talking about how many women or men have and how many children they have out the street. But from your book, I realized that there are more women tailor making jackets <laughs> than we thought. Yes, yes, the women are catching up. The women are catching, catching up. up. Yes, we were trying to discuss um, the whole business of jackets, which not quite sure how it came about, but um, women have said to me, and I find it laughable, that what has happened, the men have been giving bun for years, and everybody <laughs> said, sure, it's how them stay man is man. You know, you have to, like, you have to take it. So now the women now are getting back, and the way they get back is to give jacket. <laughs> jacket so man bun. give bun and woman give jacket. Oh my you know? lord. What, and wrong, it... what wrong with that? That's what I was, that's what I was asked, so I, I give you as I, as I get it. What, what wrong, wrong with, with that? that? Okay, so you hear it's jacket for bun. That's right. <laughs> man give bun woman give jacket <laughs> that's very interesting and some of the people who are getting these jackets it's quite interesting they cross all strata they go right across the social spectrum right across uh, do you find that and in your work and in writing this book and your memories did you find that there were a lot of men who even though they found out that it was a jacket they were willing to keep yes, the child there were there were a number and in fact i give an example of one of those in the book in fact you'll find an example of just about everything inside <laughs> this book <laughs> you get an example of every social group we have um people in the entertainment business mm -hmm. we have the little ghetto youth which my daughter says why do you keep saying ghetto youth why can't you say inner city i guess she's related to Portia because she doesn't like the ghetto thing <laughs> you know, why don't you say inner city it's, it's you, a more politically correct thing to, to say know, but when they come to me i use the words used to me they don't say i'm a inner city they say miss king I'm a little ghetto youth, you know, that price are kind of steep, you know, what you can do for me, which is what I get, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I explain that we can't do anything with the pricing because we buy everything from overseas, right. so we have to charge to cover our costs, they will say, well, can pay little, little, not, not go on in the ghetto, you know, it's get, you know, I mean, I get the word ghetto. Right, so, so I that's use what the you word use. ghetto in there. And then we have legal and medical luminaries, mm -hmm. which I give an example of each. I give more doctor cases because they're very problematic because most people, if there's a doctor involved, there's some cases where two or three men claim a child, for instance. If a doctor is in the mix, 
everybody else reckon that we're going to doctor the report to, to, for, the doctor, for the doctor all right so so they're problematic and i give a couple doctor cases i give the occasional one probably of a lawyer case i did see a lawyer case yeah, in there who yeah. i mean you know he oh boy. thought he had to be right and he Absolutely. was going to follow this and thing by the and law and abusive and yeah. rude you know and yeah yeah the, the cases that went to court were not were not something i, I like they're kind of um horror stories Really so like you had you do in here we have cases that are cases that went to court mm -hmm. we have cases that are just personal yes personal paternity, paternity. what else do when we they have? come as personal paternities we then tell them they come back to me and i can explain the scientific findings okay if it comes through an agency like the immigration from the embassy or from the court oh so you have to do paternity as well cover. for that yes immigration okay. there's a there's a chapter called immigration rules and mm -hmm. there's a lot of immigration rules so yes Different that, agencies. I can see how the immigration thing would be a problem yeah. because me, for example, I adopted a young lady when she was 16 mm -hmm. and uh, when she was 14, sorry. Yeah. And when I migrated, I had not adopted her legally. Okay. And so when I migrated, she couldn't come with me. And that was a, that was a real blow. Yeah, well, it if it's a legal blow. adoption, that's not so much of a problem. But once you say, I'm, and what we have in Jamaica, we have this pet name thing. Yes, Precious. A child will go Princess. on, her name is, yeah, Marcia, but everybody calls her Precious. And if the mother goes in and says, I'm sponsoring Precious, and the paper says Marcia, they figure, if you don't know your child's name, how can you be, mm -hmm. you know, how can you be the real uh, mother? Or in a case where you have some kids who were raised by an uncle or something yes, like that, that, and they have the same last name. Yeah. Would that would they be allowed to go if it turns out from the paternity test that it's not the father but they raise them? I mean, do they ever give leeway for they that? They don't seem to have that type of. There's no can gray I say area. humanity? No, they, they they don't they don't deal with that. They, they're not. It has to be black or white. Okay. You're either the biological parent or you're not. And if you're not, and there are a lot of issues, as I say, inside there, gives you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are covering jacket or full suit today on Shelf Life. Author is Sonia King. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'll read you a few passages and we'll talk about some specific stories, my favorite stories, inside this book. Be right back. I'm back with you today on Shelf Life with Sonia King, author of Jacket or Full Suit. And I'm going to share some of my favorite stories in this book. Because this entire book is just absolutely hilarious. But there is a story in here called The Not Very Civil Servant. And of course, I'm not going to read the whole story to you. I'm just going to say that this gentleman, for some unknown reason, thought he should have gotten this test for free. Yes, because he was in the political sphere. Big, big, thought, big in the political sphere. Because he was so in a particular ministry that gave him, you know, the rights to have his test done without charge was Ooh. not amused when I, and he dropped the appropriate names of mm -hmm. people that were high profile in, in the medical field and you know, at, on campus and demanded to have his test done free <laughs> and was not amused when I said even the life or death cases had to pay because we, we buy everything from overseas. Now that, that one, as I say, is in political sphere. There are people in the other areas, um, academic areas. Mm -hmm. I put a story in there of the university student at risk. The case with the professor, because we did have also academic um, people on the faculty. Right. That, um, and I won't say which university is. I won't say which university the student was at, but he was a university stu tertiary student. And the professor case was, would not have made good reading. <laughs> the report was, the, the request was made, the test was done, he came and picked up his report. There was nothing of interest in that case, and I tried to give you the right, more interesting, the more interesting cases. cases. Yeah, there are people from the entertainment field. I give you a DJ and his Browning. And the Browning, as one, yes. And one, as one of those cases. But stick a pin there. This is what I found really hilarious, where you say, he announced that he was a patient at the hematology clinic and had just been told by the doctor that his blood doesn't have any cells. <laughs> so he had come back to me to find out how I could say he had fathered the child. How could his blood tell me that if he had no cells? <laughs> yes, the medical. I was in the middle of the tutorial with the medical students, and they were highly amused. They were really. They said this man should have been celebrating at his age and stage. <laughs> he should have been out there waving a flag to say, you know, I can I still can do this still thing. Do yeah, you know, I mean, 
Why is he complaining? <laughs> but what do you mean by blood didn't have any cells? I, I mean, I almost fell off my bed when I was reading that one. That a man of his age yeah. could come up with something as ridiculous as that to, to I say try, he didn't I try father everything. a child. I try everything. So many men had never been near this woman. <laughs> and they're found to be the biological. The other one that really got me. This one actually, again, when you talked about the dangers of this job and what went into this book, this never crossed my mind. The higher science. The fact that you had people bringing in Obi and voodoo. Yeah, well, I thought I was doing a higher science, but I found out that there was higher science. There's a higher mind, science to your science higher science. science. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> no, th that is what they call science. Science, <laughs> science, science again. Yes. Science again. <laughs> science again. That's not science. That's science. And this, what I find interesting is that you didn't realize this doll that the woman had left was a voodoo doll. No, I didn't. I saw this little thing that looked like it was in national dress. <laughs> and I just kept going around it, doing my work, until the cleaner came in. And I mean, that, that was something else. I mean, the reaction just told me that something was wrong. So you thought the lady had just left this doll well, and yeah, was her I'm child's saying, doll? I'm saying, why didn't uh, the child must have been crying for her doll? <laughs> How come they haven't come back for this doll? And I put it on the counter, hoping that if they came back, they would realize that you know, it was still here and they could get it. They hadn't lost it in case the baby was crying, <laughs> wanted back the doll, you know. No, well, you see, you live and learn. But this, is what, this is what happens when you don't know anything about those things. No, well. <laughs> you see a doll no. and you figure it's a kid's doll and it's right. actually a science doll. That's right. And then there's this story. Tosh says, don't throw stones, but I say, don't throw words. And this one was hilarious because this involves a married couple with five children and the father, if I remember, was not sure the last one was his. Yeah. And how did that case turn out? Well, you see, um, women have a way of, the lady in this particular case, the wife, was best friend with the man's sister. Okay. The sister was, the, was their bridesmaid, if I remember correctly. And um, they were best friends, but because the man was in business and business that did very well, his wife was benefiting from that. So she would have all the jewelry and she would be doing well and she could go out. And the sister started to get jealous. So she would, from time to time, would throw words. But the man would ignore it and say, Chuck. So she stayed. So there's a sister who actually thought it was yes. a good idea to yes. check if the last child was his. Yes. Oh, man's a fool. No, sister Ricky don't look like him. Oh, I'm a fool. No, no, sister. The baby, not for him. So he decided, now you see, the ego thing. At the beginning of the book, I tell you the reasons for doing tests. Not just because the court says or the embassy says. The ego thing with, with the men, if your friends say, well, boy, you know, they don't look like you, that ego thing gets them, and they mm -hmm. have to prove that they can't get born. But in this case, it turned out that it was child number three. Yes, well, this, this, <laughs> no, I'm happy that I didn't have to explain that to them, because he, they had come looking at child number five, and we had said, well, okay, but the man wanted everything done. So the ego, he wanted, child to, he wanted to shut up his sister, basically. The sister pointed a finger at child number five, and he said, Chad, do everybody. Let me just get her out of here. And it turned out to be child number three. Child number three. five was a perfect match. But there must have been problems in the marriage that the sister knew about. Right. But the problems had been resolved. But the problem was really at child number child three. Child number three. Well, ladies and gentlemen, see, you can never tell. Yeah, but the blood doesn't lie, you see. <laughs> the blood doesn't, doesn't lie. lie. Jacket or full suit. When we come back after this break, we'll have a little quick discussion with some of Sonia's friends, some people who have read the book, and um, give you a different insight into Jacket or Full Suit. We'll be right back. This week's top 10 bestsellers brought to you by Bookophilia and OrganoCoffeeGuy.com, independent distributor of Organo Gold Coffee and other fine products made with 100% organic Ganoderma extract. For more information, visit OrganoCoffeeGuy.com. Welcome back to Shelf Life. We're discussing Jacket or Full Suit. We have our author, Sonia King, and we have two guests in the audience who are going to be doing some lively discussion about this book. Yes, Sonia. Well, first of all, I want to tell you that the, that book was very well written indeed. Thank because you. what you did was to compress in a few pages a comical but factual account 
And what you also accomplished was to explore the myth that Jamaican women are bastions of fidelity. Almost every week there's a letter in the advice columns of the newspapers. But there's a very interesting letter yesterday's gleaner from a man actually who says um, he lives in Trelawney, has a girlfriend in Montego Bay, and was she told him that she was having his child. Then she, he gets a call that she's in the hospital having delivered. He goes with his bunch of flowers only to find another man sitting beside her, yeah. claiming that child. So you see, it's not always denial. Yes. Sometimes you have two or three men claiming that child. Yes. The question I had for you, were you ever able to discover or research the origin of the word jacket? Where did that come from? Tried very hard, Trevor. Could never find out from anybody where that word came. A lot of people gave different ideas as to why, and they would say, well, you know, a suit is made to fit. Mm -hmm. You know, and a jacket could be just a jacket that you just throw on over. Mm -hmm. Professor Shivan said they have the same thing in the islands, but they called it ready-made. That's interesting. Okay, that's, that's interesting. interesting. That's in, yeah, yeah. But I, went, I was in Antigua on one of the launches, the book. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that to the person who was given the job to take me around. And he said, yeah, but we call them ready-made jackets. Okay. Probably so, you know. You know, it's, it's already, it's not like already a situation that already exists that they're just kind of pasting into another yeah. situation. Mm -hmm. Ready-made. It's interesting. Ready-made. Well, you know, you know what I really liked about that book? The fact that it is readable across the entire spectrum. It really is. Everybody. It's very easy to and read. You know, you, you spoke about people at inner city and ghetto yes. and people in the higher strata of society. It exactly. doesn't matter where you are. I was told that someone carried it on a plane yes. and, I did as well, and yes. it was a good in-flight yes. read. Yes. That was the idea. Exactly. It's not exactly. It's not. I didn't want it to be war and peace. It could have mm -hmm. been five <laughs> times <laughs> it could have been five times the size for yes. the volume yes. of, of work that I yes. did. Of information yes. But I, I didn't want to be keeping repeating similar stories yes. and I didn't want to have But I need to ask this question also, yeah. mm -hmm. as a female. Yeah. You yourself was involved in the iconoclastic explosion of this myth. How did you feel about that? What was your personal reaction? Well, you know as a scientist, Trevor, that you put down what you get. You know, if you're, if you're testing yourself for diabetes, you don't want to be a diabetic. But if you find sugar there, you're going to put that sugar. Is there. Yeah, you're but you're a scientist, say. but you're also human. Yes. So I'm asking you how. You're, you're, you're a scientist, you're a human. You're writing this book now. You're, well. you're yes. seeing your Jamaican females, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Within marriage, outside of marriage. It doesn't marriage. make a difference. If it was you, I would have to write exactly it what was, it was. Yes. If it was my husband, yeah. I would have to put exactly what was there. As a scientist, I can't you play with to. the facts. You have to. The facts are the facts. But as a woman, I wasn't very surprised by it. We were talking before we came on a boat. The, the relationship that women have in, in our African societies that I think we've carried over in terms of being very matriarchal. So women making choices about who they want in their lives, who they believe should be the father of their child. Wasn't that surprising? What did surprise me as a Jamaican woman is the spectrum. I really did expect it to be something that was more, you know, in one level of society no, yeah. than in another. So, should, so that was really so interesting. Should we as men now feel better? <laughs> that we are not a repository of infidelity and adultery. No, you should no, feel. That, um, how are we supposed to feel? Should, when we extract the comic from us. it, yeah. mm -hmm. and we now start to get down to core issues inside the book, yeah. the behavior, yeah. the social yes. and sexual behavior yes, of Jamaican men and Jamaican women yes. within and outside of marriage, how should we as men now feel? You could probably <laughs> you feel bad us. that you have provoked the woman. Well, I feel good. To go I, well, I'm telling you, I feel great. <laughs> we have been called dogs, adulterers, right. that's infidels, that's that's that sort of thing. When I find out you said that, you said that, that women are now catching up with us, I say, hey, this is but fantastic. But women caught up in everything. Look at the male-dominated. Um, but we are actually... No, Trevor, tell, you know... Uh, they are victims of it. Hey, no, no, no. Men are no, victims no, no, no. of this thing. Men are all they said. Look at the men. No, you can't go on that. You can't say men are marginalized. They've been saying this because women were all kept down. You can't say that. So this <laughs> absolutely wonderful discussion, but we are running out of time. I've been given a wrap up signal. Of course. It has been great. And all I can say is if you want to get in on this discussion, you're going to have to buy the, the book. book. The book we're talking about today is Jacket or Full Suit. The author is Sonia King. And we have been having a good time here on Shelf Life. Shelf Life is brought to you by Jam Copy. Protect, respect, access. Jamaica Business Journal. Relevant, insightful, informative. 
Talawa Magazine for the latest news in culture and the arts, and Bookophilia, Live Inspired. I'll see you again next week for some more shelf life when we'll discuss another book and meet another author. Thank you for joining me.